بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد In light of the shocking attacks that took place recently in Paris and then the subsequent decision to reprint some of the cartoons uh, this is just an opportunity I'm taking to inshallah uh, just speak to our Muslim brothers and sisters and others around the world uh, just about how our reaction should be before I go into that, I think there's a few things that I just want to clarify. What, the first point is about the love for the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that Muslims have. Many non-Muslims and many people will probably be quite amazed, astonished, maybe even quite taken aback by the reaction that Muslims have when uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is, is abused. And uh, people don't know because it's... It's, it's very difficult for people to fathom this and understand it. So I want to try to give an explanation of this. Uh, over the course of history, there's probably not been any individual who has been revered and respected and followed to such a degree so individually that every act of his has been preserved, recorded, and then followed and emulated uh, around the world over various different cultures and ethnicities over the various centuries. So for example, you'll see 1.8 billion Muslims from around the world representing all the countries that exist and various different ethnicities, cultures, languages, etc. They love the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. They see him as a savior. They not only say, see him as a savior for this life, but a savior for, for the life to come. And you know, for Christians who love Jesus Christ, they can probably get an idea of this, but with the Prophet Muhammad, it's even more because we have everything about him, even down to what he ate, how he ate, how he sat, which fingers he used. We have all of these details, and we have great numerous incidents from his life. This whole biography has been recorded, you know, in numerous volumes, exactly about his merciful nature. You know, for example, you have one of his servants who says that I served him for 10 years. His name was Anas. He said, I served him for 10 years and never once did he tell me off. And if anybody else in the family told me off or said, why did you do this or why did you do that? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would actually tell them that, no, no, don't tell him off. You know, he's helping us out. Don't, don't tell him off. So the, I, I personally see this as a miracle, as a, as a miracle that God has placed into the hearts of, you know, billions of people throughout the world, both Muslims and non-Muslims. Uh, this love for this great individual who we call a mercy to the world as the Quran calls him as well. Now moving on to the second point to contrast that with, you've got this concept of free speech. Now when it comes to certain issues, for example with Muslims at the current time, when it comes to abusing Muslims or their prophet, free speech seems to stand up and the banners of free speech go up. When it comes to anything else, I mean there's no country in the world that doesn't, you know, that has totally unrestricted uh, absolute free speech you know it's impossible for that to happen otherwise people will be doing all sorts of crazy things so so now the question is that why is this allowed when it comes to uh, uh, really hurting the sensitivities of 1.6 billion 1.8 billion muslims in the world now the other thing is let's just look at a few issues here if somebody for example said that they're going to go and do a social experiment as some people do so for example what they decided to do is they go into uh, you know, a reputable downtown area, a city center of uh, one of the cities in the world, for example, London, New York, or, ca uh, ca you know, in Los, An Los Angeles or somewhere in downtown. And then, you know, as a social experiment, what he's doing is this person is going around, standing there in the middle, just calling everybody that goes past saying that, I mean, I hate to say this, but for example, saying, your mom's a whore, for example. Now, just imagine what kind of reaction he's going to have in that kind of a place. You're going to have numerous people you're going to have numerous people who will just probably ignore it completely, just walk past, pretend they didn't hear, maybe just not even give him a look and just walk right past because, you know, they've got better things to do. They don't care about these things. They probably think that this person's crazy anyway, right? So they will totally ignore him. But then you're going to have a few other people who will kind of give him a stare or look at him. And then you'll have more people who may go and retort something back and call his mama whore or say something else to him. And then you'll actually probably have certain individuals who will try to attack the person. But what you'll then notice is that if this person uh, wanted to go and do this social experiment, in, uh, for example, uh, a slum area, downtrodden area with lots of gangs going on and everything around him. And then he goes and tries to do that there. He'll see that there's going to be a worse reaction that will come about 
probably more quickly than it did in the other place. So if you do this kind of social experiment, you'll see that people will react in different ways. Some people will ignore it, some people will respond, and then some people may even take the matter further. You know, someone may go to the courts and someone may go to the police and report him, but then others will take the matter in their own hand. Similarly, you've got Muslims around the world, 1.8 1 billion diverse Muslims around the world. So you know, at the end of the day, you're going to have people who are going to react in a beautiful way. You're going to have people who are going to react in a violent way. Now, Islam shows that you react always in a positive way. You always react in a positive way. You always react in a better way than the person uh, than the person is doing. You re you repay evil with good as far as possible, and you know you show a more virtuous you you show a more virtuous way. But what we need to understand from this is that when you take the love of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then you take this uh, this so-called free speech that allows criticism of the Prophet and abuse of him then obviously you see that this is going to anger a lot of Muslims. And then just like with that social experiment, different Muslims are probably going to have a different reaction. Now we as scholars, we're, we're going to try to calm the people down. We're going to try to explain to them that this is the wrong way to do things. There's a better way to do things. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, himself, uh, forgave so many people uh, when when they would come and abuse him he would he, he would he would not respond in an aggressive attitude in fact one of the most beautiful things is that this is not the first time that somebody's criticizing the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam during the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself they started uh, disfiguring his name they started uh, modifying his name and saying instead of muhammad which is such a beautiful name and such a such a perfect name even in this situation they started calling him Mudhammam in Arabic, which means the kind of disfigured, the criticized one, the disfigured one, the non-praiseworthy one. So the Prophet wasallam so beautifully said that, look how Allah has protected me. They call me Mudhammam, whereas that's not my name. My name is Muhammad. Muhammad means the most praise, praised one. And today, if you look around the world, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is being praised throughout the world. In fact, there's probably nobody else whose name is being taken so frequently than the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, because with every prayer that takes place, you have a call to prayer. And in the call to prayer, you have Ashhadu Anna Muhammad al Rasulullah. I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, messenger of God. This is taking place throughout the countries, probably at every minute of the day, there's a call to prayer being given. Then even in the prayer, there's when you send blessings on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by saying, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has everything going for him, has everything going for him. What we have to do as Muslims is that we have to show the best of character. Number two, we, we're going to really have to stop letting other people do our job of promoting the beauty of the Prophet Wasallam, Because this is where we're failing. What we have to do is we have to send abundant blessings on the Muhammad Wasallam as much as possible. We need to speak as much about his greatness and his praiseworthiness to others, our colleagues, our co-workers, our, our neighbors, etc. We need to speak to them about it because at the end of the day, nobody's going to go to a book or online to check out who Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam really was. They're just going to listen to what people are telling them in the media or what the media tells them or what these events uh, you know, provide as a conclusion to them. So what Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our dear Prophet, he departed this world about you know, 1400 years ago, and he left it to us to embody his character, the beautiful behavior, the beautiful sublime character that he left for us, which he emphasized so much. He says that I have been sent to complete good character. So he's left all of that to us. Now, unfortunately, we're suffering today because we don't even read the seerah. I mean, how many of us as Muslims read the biography of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How can we claim to really know him? How can we claim to really know how to act in all situations? That when somebody slanders me or slanders my Prophet, how should I react? You know, how did the Prophet ﷺ react? Yes, some of you may be saying, well, he did, you know, uh, order somebody to be killed who, who had criticized and so on. Well, you see, that's a historical, uh, historical point of state that he was a state leader. What he does as a state leader is something totally different to what individuals on the street 
you know, can do or allowed to do. Because otherwise, it'd be, it would be abused if anybody has the right to just take up arms themselves and go and kill people. Because, you know, people can say tomorrow, uh, why people can go and kill someone tomorrow. And then when, when you're asked, why did you kill him? You say, oh, because he abused the Prophet. I mean, clearly, that's all of these kind of situations in a proper state system has to be taken through the courts and it needs to be established and so on. There are certain measures that need to be taken and so on and so forth. But generally, when you look at the Prophet's life, like the woman who used to live next door, put thorns on his, on his path and so on, he generally forgave. But we as Muslims, what we need to do is that we're, we're, the reason we're failing is because we're failing both from a religious perspective that we're not fulfilling the obligations that we need to do in our Ourselves about the behavior, the conduct, the worship, uh, the, the, the emulation of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that we should be following. So from a dini perspective, from a religious perspective, we're not doing enough to really embody his behavior and his worship. And neither from a dunyawi perspective are we doing enough. We're not campaigning politically enough. We're not uh, educating people. So we're not educating people. We're not uh, pressuring uh, you know we're not working in the in the political side of it to make it a crime to uh, to criticize Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it should be the case because it, it you know it, it causes great anguish to 1.8 billion people around the world but the muslim ummah aren't we strong enough to get that passed in law as other groups have been able to get uh, other issues that uh, that probably hurt less people maybe even in in, in many cases you know uh, uh, denying certain uh, genocides that took place or, or Holocaust or whatever it is and you know for, for good reason I mean for good reason but aren't we you know aren't we uh, strong enough to do that yet I mean that's something that we have to understand both from a religious perspective of acting and emulating the, the true character of the Prophet Muhammad we're, we're fading miserably in that because we don't even read his, uh, his life story and we're also fading from a, from a, uh, from a worldly purely political uh, perspective as well that we don't do anything so I've been thinking to myself, what is it that we can do to counter the Islamophobia? And it's, it's something that we all have to give a thought to, that internationally, nationally speaking, on a large scale, how can we show people what the true character of the Messenger Wasallam was and what he really represented, what he really came to this world for? He did not come to this world you know, to, to just kill people and so on. But that's the, the wars are what's generally highlighted, unfortunately. We, we have to really start speaking about the beauty that he came from because this is the climate to speak about that the world is looking for beauty. The world is looking for mercy. And this is what we need to highlight. The, the mercy of the Prophet ﷺ is unfortunately hidden. We have not shown it in our character. We've not, we've not shown him, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, in his true light. So that's something that we need to do. So for the final point is that what, what I think we should do is that whenever a cartoons of this nature come out, we need to totally ignore them. We're not going to forward, we're not going to WhatsApp, we're not going to click, we're not going to view them ourselves because all of this, all of this works on response, all of this works on popularity. The, the, the more we ignore it, and we've got a lot of people we can encourage to just totally ignore it. So don't even, for example, send a link to somebody else and say, don't click on this or don't go to this website or don't press this or don't do that. Or look how bad this is. What should we do? And so on and so forth. The best thing for all of this is to ignore it. Because crazy people that produce cartoons, extremists basically, they are extremists. When they do these kind of things, the only reason they do it is to find a reaction. If they don't get a reaction from the right kind of people, because at the end of the day, it's like the bully at school. What he is going to do is that bully at school is going to stop bothering the weak, the weak people. And if he gets a reaction, if he or she gets a reaction, he's going to do it even more because that's what feeds him. That's what gives him the impetus to carry on. And if there's, if there's, a, total, uh, you know, if there's a total rejection of it, if people don't pay him any attention, pay him or her any attention whatsoever, then eventually they'll have to stop and find something else to do. So I think this is definitely one thing that we, we have to do is to totally ignore this. Speak to people, our co-workers, neighbors, etc. about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Try to learn more about him yourself so we're much more educated about him in his different situations. And on a political level and on a social level, we try to encourage and, and uh, we, we try to raise more awareness and we, we, we try to work on this. So in conclusion, I think at this time we need to be very, very calm and we need to make lots and lots of dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a time when our hearts are kind of broken because of the depictions and because of the violence that's done in our name. So 
when, when you have a broken heart, if you use it in the right, the right emotion to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's response comes. So we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for great assistance and help during this time. And as I mentioned earlier, the Prophet ﷺ is totally blemish free. He is the Muhammad as his name has been given, such a well chosen name. But we need to do our part by trying to act the part, act the best role model to imbibe his teachings in ourselves, in our behavior and in our conduct with everybody, whether it be at work or at school, at home or whatever it is. That's what we really need to know, do more of, learn more seerah and, and really send a lot of blessings on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So send a lot of blessings on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because every blessing that we send on him, then we get 10 blessings that sent on us and the ummah really, really needs blessings right now. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ahli Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa sallim wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa baraka wa sallam 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 wa